Coming up on City View, pedicabs are getting revved up just in time for the spring festival season. We'll explain coming up. And once the crowds leave downtown, what happens to all that trash left behind? Plus, we've got a sneak peek at the latest artwork to grace the halls of City Hall. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Marissa Monroy. The Austin City Council recently adopted the Austin Strategic Direction 2023 plan. City staff, council, and the community spent the last 13 months drafting it. The goal is to create a playbook with clear priorities for the city. Further, it aids our ability to achieve the goals set out in Imagine Austin and many active plans with a three to five year perspective that bridges the annual budget process. The City of Austin has not had a strategic plan in place since the early 2000s. Staff from across the city worked with Council to establish metrics that will help measure success in advancing six key equitable community outcomes. Having economic opportunities and resources that enable us to thrive in our community, getting us where we want to go when we want to get there, safely and cost effectively. Being safe in our home, at work, and in our community enjoying a sustainable environment and a healthy life, physically and mentally. Being enriched by Austin's unique civic, cultural, ethnic and learning opportunities. Believing that city government works effectively and collaboratively for all of us, that it is equitable, ethical and innovative. The Strategic Direction 2023 document can be viewed at austintexas.gov slash strategic plan. Switching gears, Traversing Austin's steep hills on two wheels while carrying some extra weight in the back? Well, it's not a job I could do, but it's a way of life for hundreds of pedicab operators in Austin. And now some of those operators are getting an extra electric boost just in time for the spring festival season. The Austin Transportation Department and Austin Energy teamed up and launched a year-long pilot program to see how electric pedicabs perform on Austin's streets. Department leaders hope it will be a great last mile option now that pedicab operators will be able to reach greater distances more easily. This is part of the City of Austin's Smart Mobility Roadmap, so we're trying to encourage the electrification of alternative transportation. So taking a look at electric bikes, electric motorcycles, mopeds, and now electric assist pedicabs. The technology is similar to an electric bike. The pedicab companies are responsible for paying for the equipment and making sure the pedicabs pass the city's safety tests and follow the program rules. Safety is our number one priority and we want to ensure the safety of all of Austin's uh, uh, ridership. If they experienced anything um, that would, would concern safety at all, uh, we would want to take a look at that and, and uh, address the issues accordingly. If you happen to find yourself on an e-pedicab, we want to know what you think of your ride. Each pedicab will be equipped with a QR code, website, and link that you can use to provide your feedback. For more information, visit austintexas.gov slash ePedicabs. So how does Austin transform each night from festival goer mania to business as usual the following morning during spring festival season? It's not an act of magic that helps keep Austin clean. It's the crews at Austin Resource Recovery working around the clock. You can see ARR crews out and about emptying the 400 permanent and 250 temporary trash and recycling containers. Once the dust settles and the crowds clear, the real magic happens. Litter abatement crews take to the streets nightly with a combination of ATVs, street sweeping trucks, and boots on the ground to clear over 230,000 pounds of trash each year. Big thanks to those crews. After a competitive selection process with more than 70 submissions, 13 films have been chosen for the Faces of Austin film competition. The Cultural Arts Division opened a call for local filmmakers to submit shorts that were filmed in Austin and or highlight an Austin topic or organization. All selected filmmakers will receive a $500 honorarium for their contribution as artists to the cultural landscape of Austin. The Faces of Austin 2018 filmmakers recently gathered for a screening of their shorts at a South by Southwest Film Festival community screening, where celebrated Austin actor and filmmaker Macon Blair announced his Judge's Choice selections. Best Narrative went to Catherine Kraft and Artemis Anastasia Dew for Charlotte and Charlie, a film about a young woman 
who, due to vision loss, realizes she has to give up driving. But she can't bring herself to say goodbye to her beloved car until it roars to life and takes her on a final fantastical journey. Best Documentary went to Louisiana Crutes for language lessons, which documents a group of Arabic-speaking women who volunteer their time to teach English to women refugees from Syria. Both the teacher and the students live in Austin, but they communicate only through Skype. The full list of short films will air throughout the year here on ATXN, online, and at special screenings. You can also view them on the City of Austin's YouTube page, which can be reached through ATXN.TV. Thanks to all who participated in this year's program. Did you know that the City of Austin houses one of the largest public displays of Austin artists? Recently, more than 1,300 art lovers attended the 14th annual People's Gallery exhibition at City Hall. The People's Gallery is a free annual exhibition that showcases 125 to 150 works from approximately 100 regional artists each year in order to encourage public dialogue, understanding, and enjoyment of the visual arts. Each year, the public can vote for the People's Choice, a selected artwork that will be purchased from the artist and added to City Hall's permanent collection. The winner will be announced during next year's opening. We encourage you to visit City Hall to check out the artwork and to vote in person for your top three favorites. For those unable to visit in person, the gallery has just launched a mobile tour so that anyone can view the collection remotely. Visit austincityhall.oncell.com to check that out. That's all for this week's City View. I'm your host, Marissa Monroy. Our next episode premieres on March 26th. Thanks for watching.